don't know what sort of rooftop activities. At one point, a fire pit was, go was in the plans. Um, we don't know what other, if they're going to allow parties up there. We know nothing about that. We counted on you to protect us from this. And we're still counting on you. We, we need you. To, to Let them sue. Other towns do much better. Thank you. Uh, good evening. Phil Kirsch, 93 Cedar Street. I think most of the people are here tonight about Woodland Road, which is very important. But I'd like to steal a little bit of time to talk about the expansion of the Turtleback Zoo, which I think I've spoken about before. I think you know how I feel about it personally, that the expansion has gone far enough already that it really needs to be stopped and looked at. Um, you should all have copies of the, of the resolutions from the Township of Maplewood and uh, the New Jersey chapter of the Sierra Club, which outline their feelings, and they're asking for, at the very least, really the same thing, a stop to the expansion, at least until there's a master plan from the county regarding the reservation, which is going to tell us exactly what they plan to do. Um, at, at least until there's more transparency in their communications and just to take some time and, and stop before it's too late and look at what's happening. And I know you've heard a lot about the details of that, the traffic, um, the uh, effect on the environment, all these different things, just shrinking the reservation at the expense of the Turtleback Zoo, which certainly I like. It's not that people are against the zoo. Uh, many of us are members who still oppose the expansion. It's the expansion that's being opposed. Um, I have requested before, I hope maybe at the next meeting, there is a lot going on tonight, I definitely would like to hear from the Township Committee members where they stand on this, if they feel that we should wait to do anything until there's a master plan, if they feel that the expansion should be have a pause, if they're in favor of the expansion, I'd love to hear that tonight or certainly at the next meeting. And um, just ask you to consider, look at those resolutions that were passed on. I think that uh, West Orange is going to consider a resolution like Maplewood's at their meeting, which I think is a week from tonight. I think South Orange wants to wait to see the master plan before they make a final decision. But there's a lot of discussion. I think, you know, there's been a lot in the media. The media is here tonight about this issue. There's an interview on the news tonight. There's a real groundswell against the expansion of Turtleback until we see exactly what's going to happen you know, what the effects are going to be or maybe where it finally will stop. So I think there are some other people who want to speak about that too, but uh, thanks for listening. And again, at the, I would love to see on the next meeting a discussion where we could hear the Township Committee's views about this and carry on from there. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening, Mayor and uh, Committee Committee members, my name is Lauren Sweat Vilas. I live in West Orange, New Jersey, on Prospect Avenue. And uh, CR Club representative had to leave a little earlier tonight. I have my bag. I got to run out. School starts tomorrow. Um, I just wanted to speak about the zoo as well. I'm a president, co-founder of Our Green West Orange, a nonprofit advocacy group located in West Orange. Uh, we're all volunteer residents working to create a sustainable, protect a local environment, including, I'm trying to go a little faster, I'm used to five minutes, including monitoring development projects and the redevelopers that come before our zoning and planning boards. So I'd be remiss if I didn't commend the group that's behind me um, for coming out to the meeting and zoning board and planning board meetings and really fighting um, for their property values and their rights in the environment. Um, we find the same thing happening in West Orange. We work hard at protecting our space. So the same thing is happening. Uh, you can find us also at www.rgreenwestorange.org. I am speaking fast, so hopefully the transcripts can fill in any blanks um, th that are missed. Um, as with many projects, uh, be it advocacy work or home project, once started, a project can resemble an onion, layer after layer after layer of more information, more work, sometimes more tears, and all hidden from that very outer layer. Our recent onion work is the Turtleback Zoo's plans for who, know, who knows what, who knows when and who knows why. But what we do know is the county wants to take, wants to expand the zoo. They want to take another acre of land. They want to double the, the visitors at the zoo from one, uh, from one, 900,000 visitors to uh, over uh, 1.8 uh, million visitors. Um, it's all about money. Some townships, like my own, um, are playing a wait and see game. As Mr. Kirsch had stated, Maplewood did pass a resolution um, that they're not going to allow any expansion until they see the master plan. 
uh, their concerned residents uh, breathed a sigh of relief, and residents surrounding Essex County and townships like myself were given hope that our environment, its inhabitants, and our property values, our way of life, our health, and even the animals already contained at the zoo were given hope that Maplewood leaders, they'll take a stand too, um, <coughs> that they took a stand in Milburn and West Orange and Short Hills and Summit. Here is the safety net, not Summit, their union. We are watching and want to see what's formally planned. First, they set a $16 million bear exhibit, now no bear exhibit. Then they set a 1,000 seat amphitheater, now a 500 seat amphitheater. All the animals are happy and healthy, we rehabilitate them. Now we find out that a lion died, we find out a pony died from eating um, bad hay, we find out a giraffe died, and numerous parakeets getting run over by strollers and butterflies as well. <clears throat> Residents need their elected leaders to show that they are being protected, kind of like insurance. Just introduce a resolution and approve it and say let's wait for that master plan from the, from the county. There's a reason other zoos are so large. They're located in large cities. Cities like San Diego, New York City, Orlando, Cleveland, Moscow, Beijing, so many different zoos. West Orange is 47,000 residents. Thank you very much. We just Thank have you a so lot much. To get I understand. Tonight. Appreciate your coming out. Yes, and my name is Robert Reschkus. I live at 35 Oakcrest Road in West Orange, New Jersey, right near the South Mountain Reservation in the Turtle Bag Zoo. So I support the positions of the two previous speakers because I hear noise coming from the uh, zoo and the complex uh, constantly, but I hear the train whistle. So uh, I appreciate you discussing this whole issue of uh, looking at adopting a resolution. Because, and I'm, I'm looking forward to having advertised public meetings to discuss the master plan because I'm interested to see how the master plan is going to treat an amphitheater with a sound system to be placed in the middle of the reservation and how that's going to impact the reservation for future generations and the surrounding neighborhoods. And I'm also looking to, for public meetings like the county had it with the Livingston residents about the Riker Hill Art Park reconstruction so that everybody could have a say about how, what, what should be placed at the zoo site and the specific role of, of, of the amphitheater. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for coming out tonight. Lynn Ranieri from 94 Oakview Terrace. I'm here to address the Woodland and Chatham Road um, proposed development. In the, re in the recently revised master plan that was just adopted by the Planning Board and the Township Committee, Goal 1, Objective 1.01, is to protect the character of the established neighborhoods and encourage land use and development at an appropriate scale and density. Goal 4, Objective 4.02, states the town should maintain a pedestrian scale in all appropriate business districts. The land use plan element of the revised master plan notes, the planning board recognizes that the single family character of the R3 through R6 zones should be preserved and protected to avoid development that is out of sync with the underlining zoning and neighborhood character. It adds a recommendation to review the R6 zoning to ensure that new residential development and additions are compatible with the prevailing neighborhood and to ensure that new construction is not excessively bulky in relation to the existing neighborhood context. The master plan is the embodiment of the voices of the people of Milburn. <coughs> sorry, <coughs> regarding the character and development of the town. The township committee is guided by those voices and plans and was elected by the residents to represent those plans. In 2017, the residents of the Washington section of Milburn saw the character of their neighborhood being changed drastically by overdevelopment on their streets and the township committee responded promptly by restricting the size of those oversized buildings. The density and height of the proposed development at the top of Woodland Road is similarly massively out of scale for the neighboring residential section and unbelievably and unnecessarily dense for such a small lot. And finally, on page 36 of the revised master plan, protection of neighborhood character, it says the people in the um, survey, community survey, said the people, the tree-lined streets, the local architecture, and Milburn's small town feel were cited as qualities that the responders loved 
best about their neighborhood and were considered Milburn's greatest assets. They added, that's my half a minute, uh, they added the R6 residential zone was specifically mentioned as having new construction out of context with the surrounding neighborhood. Participants in the visioning section remarked that there were instances of overdevelopment in single family residential zones. Please, please, please apply the same consideration to the our neighborhood and the proposed overdevelopment. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Council. Marilyn Burney, 420 Milburn Avenue. It's been a while since I've been here. I have been following what's going on. One of the gentlemen that was up here from West Orange <laughs> encouraged us to keep fighting. I'm, I'm going to look at this from a different way. I think everyone here is advocating for what they believe is the way that this town should proceed. I don't think it's fighting. I think it's advocating. You might say it's mincing words, but I don't think so. I think they have very different contexts. About a year, two years ago, when there was an election cycle going on, and some of the committee members were voted out, that was stated to be our referendum. That was our choice. Many of you are sitting here because of that quote unquote referendum. You were voted in because you stated that you were going to represent what many of the residents wanted. From what I've been reading, what I've been hearing, what I've been watching, I'm not so sure that that's been going on. Beyond that, this housing project that is proposed for the Woodland section, that master plan was, it took an entire year plus. It is completely anti that master plan. How do I know? Because I worked on it. I was on that planning board at that time. For anybody to say that a housing project and business area of that scale and that magnitude fits within the casting character of this town in that section, it, it, it's ridiculous. As Ms. Ranieri just said, when there was overbuilding going on in the Washington section, it was immediately met by limiting the height and FAR. Now you're completely backtracking on that. Has anyone decided or determined how this project will drain, where all that water is going to go with all of these new buildings? Plus, and I am pro development, but pro smart development. You go straight to the sidewalk, straight to the street. You've got the one coming on Milburn Avenue at the uh, nexus where Essex comes down, or Douglas. We're going to have nowhere for our water to go. Also, two bedrooms, three bedrooms. we got more kids moving in. How are our schools going to hold this? We're already, we're, we already have kids that can't sit in their classrooms. Have you thought about this? Has this been discussed? Have the affordable housing part of it. Okay, I, we know we need it. Has anyone looked into NOAA, naturally occurring affordable housing? All those units on Main Street and Milburn Avenue? I don't think you have. I don't even know that you know what NOAA is. Thank you, Ms. Bernie. I'm sorry to cut you off, but a lot of people want to speak. Uh, Larry Nestor, 79 Stony Lane. So I've been at a couple of these meetings where the Woodland Road development was discussed. And when you don't hear it every day, I think it gives you a different perspective and lens from those that are in the daily discussions for the past couple of years. And listening to the results of the negotiation, it is, it's obvious, at least to me, of how one-sided the negotiation was or appears and it almost sounds like negligence on the part of whomever negotiated for the town. And so I'm not here to talk about the details, the, you know, the, the courtyard, the, the glass windows. But to me, it seems like the town should just take a step back and reevaluate what they've done and just take a fresh look. 
like sit back, don't don't try to dissect each piece of each part of the, um, I forgot what the document's called, the agreement or the negotiation, but just step back and say, this is my town, and does this seem like a good idea? The height, the volume, the traffic, and everything else that everyone said. I just think a fresh look is what's needed. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Wen Zhang. I live at um, 100 Ophir Terror. Um, I heard a lot of people uh, talking about the proposal of the mass development at the Woodland um, Chatham Road across that area. Um, I just want to add on something. Um, see, I believe all our, or most families moving to this town uh, for you know better uh, quality life. Uh, but I, I, I don't think this massive development will bring any benefit to, you know, the residential area. This is to, <laughs> um, yeah, not to counting about, you know, the more traffic, um, you know, the, the urgent care. Yeah, it, it probably, it will benefit for people who need the service, service but, but also it brings in a lot of traffic. And uh, you know the tragedy already happened at that at that cross. I believe I heard you know some like hit and run happened earlier uh, this year, and uh, now with more families moving, more traffic jam, and can everybody think about how to protect our kids in that in, in that neighborhood? Because a lot of young kids just walking to the walking to the uh, uh, school every single day. Do is there anything? Everybody considered how to protect our kids from, you know, uh, having some accident. Um, and also, uh, I want to just mention uh, about, you know, the the, 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 the parking. Is there's uh, there's less 200 parking, I believe, parking set uh, designed for this. Is that enough? I don't believe so. You know, when when more people coming in, I think, uh, you know, everybody will try to find a parking space along the street in the whole environment that will be, the, the whole community will become like a huge parking lot. And how to, you know, make all the family living there to, you know, get a really quite uh, a quality life. I mean, <laughs> you fight. This is not city. This is a suburban area. So I, I, I just, you know, urge everybody, I, again, we rely um, oh, every one of you here protecting us, you know, um, <coughs> protecting all the families and all our kids. So please, before you vote, just, you know, think what else can be done to, you know, make our life is better here. Thank, Thank you. Ms. Um, Mayor, um, my name is David Aaron Freed. I live at 87 Wellington Avenue. Um, I'm just extremely disappointed um, by what I've heard. And the reason for my disappointment, aside from many of the things that others have said, is that in the presentations that were made initially um, at this hearing, I did not hear one sentence, I don't believe, one sentence explaining how this settlement is in our best interests. I heard a lot of explanation about the details of the settlement and how, <clears throat> and, and how th uh, there were various protections built into the settlement with respect to the plan that the developer proposed, but I didn't hear anything to the effect that there was any consideration <coughs> regarding reducing the size of the building or any negotiation that took place to do that. As I look around the town, I don't see, other than at the JFK Parkway, I don't see a single building that's four stories. How do we end up with a four-story building in the middle of a small residential neighborhood? It's, it's astonishing to me. Arch architect architecturally, I don't understand why we have, we, have a, we have a landscape that slopes down, and the proposal, as I understand it, is to flatten the sight line and to cover up the site to the arboretum and to create what I suspect would be a dark corridor there where there's now a pathway. 
the whole set, the whole process disturbs me greatly, and it disappoints me that this committee appears on its way to not reviewing how this settlement was, uh, how this settlement was negotiated, and what the final provisions, um, and how the final provisions benefit or don't benefit the residents. Thank you. Good evening, Dennis Estes, 333 Lupine Way in Short Hills. I have a number of questions. The, count, the Township Committee has sat there quietly, silently. I would like some answers from the Township Committee since you've been involved, at least the committee, in connection with the mediation and what happened. A year ago, I recall I was here, and at that time the developer was, had reduced his number of units to 62. We were unhappy, we were not happy, at all satisfied with that number. Why was that number never changed? My question number one. Can someone answer that? Tonight is the night to listen to the comments. We are taking notes. But you're the township committee. You should we be able to answer the, you, you've met with Mr. Buzak, you've met with Mr. Phillips, both of whom are extremely knowledgeable. You should be able to answer my question. And I have other questions. You can't answer that one. Okay, let's, let's try another one. Summer, S Summit Medical, which I happen to be uh, affiliated in terms of the, the, having my care with Summit Medical. How many square feet does Summit Medical now have at that location? 10,000. It has 10,000, and it's Correct. not changing the footprint in terms of the amount, number of mounts. Correct. Where is the lighting going to be? What is going to be done with the lighting in terms of the, the new buildings? I do not have that in is there going to be traffic lights put on Chatham Road because of the problem? Is that a no? No. How are you going to control traffic on Chatham Road with the schools there? How you, can you answer that? I cannot give you any details right now. I can tell you we've been working very closely with the mediation group, with our attorneys, our professionals, our planner, to get the best situation. Well, isn't the, the ordinance, and I haven't seen it, obviously, well, isn't the, it, isn't the ordinance, tonight, you'll see it. doesn't the ordinance talk about how you're going to deal with traffic? I cannot speak This township right committee, now. and I realize it probably wasn't the members that are on it now, mm -hmm. spent hundreds of thousands of dollars fighting the stop and shop that was to be on uh, Milburn Avenue. A lot of it dealt with parking, a lot of it dealt with traffic. And yet I don't hear anything, anyone able to respond. Where is the traffic coming, going to be going in and out of this site? Is it going to be on Chatham or is it going to be on the, on the other road? Can someone answer that? Uh, has anyone looked at what environmental issues are concerned with this site because of its close proximity to the uh, Arboretum? Uh, Mr. I think it was Mr. Banisher, one of the, just final question. Is the Fair Share Housing Council involved? Was they, were they involved in, this, in the mediation process? No, but they will be involved after the settlement. It has to be approved by the Fair Share Housing. It doesn't have to be approved. If they, you know, it's up to them, and I, I know them very well. They so I, I suggest that before you even introduce this ordinance tonight, mm -hmm. you get answers to okay. the questions that I have raised. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Peter. Last name Pop, P-O-P-P. -P. I live at 45 Woodland Road. I got out of a sick bed to be here as well as a friend of mine did also. There's a, a lot of gravitas in this situation, but I can only take it from myself as one man and give you my perspective. We live in a very <clears throat> special area. Wake up in the morning and I hear the birds. Yes, there's some traffic off in the distance. There's some clanging. Somebody's cutting something down, building something. But if this proposal goes through, 
the way it appears to me, or it sounds as though it may, it's going to completely change the flavor of the neighborhood. We are a little hamlet. We are a little place that's special in a world of confusion and traffic and everyone trying to get from point A to point B as fast as they can. A person needs greenery and nature and the sound of nature and the smell of nature and just the knowledge that there are creatures and birds out there that bring some difference to the everyday life versus a person who unfortunately lives in the mid-city or center city of any town or place. This will, I believe, in many ways change forever, irrevocably, Milburn and my little neighborhood, Woodland Road. And as unaccustomed as I am to public speaking, that propelled me here to stand in front of you and voice my concern. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Deborah Nevis, 65 Knollwood Road. <clears throat> I am among, am among the disappointed here tonight. I've heard a lot of talk about the Mount Laurel beneficiaries who are at the heart of the affordable housing issues. I haven't really heard anything about the Glenwood and Short Hills and Milburn residents who are directly impacted by the possible ordinance that's gonna be proposed this evening. Um, Mr. Phillips talked a lot about softening the mass, which I assume is in reference to the buildings that are being proposed for Chatham and Woodland Roads. It sounds to me like what these negotiations were about was not about reducing the density of the site, which is what we asked our, asked our negotiators to do for us, but rather about ways to soften that mass. And uh, I'm not satisfied with that approach or with the results that have uh, come about from the negotiations. A year ago, we were informed that this was that 62 was what the um, developer had offered and we're again it's we're still at 62 I would be much more interested in less softening and more reduction in the density of this project it's wrong if you want to put in more affordable housing go for it you know, put in a higher percentage of affordable housing with fewer apartments. Why is that a problem? We don't have a problem with the affordable housing. We have a problem with four, three and four story building and 62 apartments. That's, you know. The other thing I wanna bring up, which is not gonna be terribly popular and it is not a personal thing, but I'm confused. My understanding is that Committee Woman Burstein was one of the members of the negotiating committee. Mm -hmm. She has now recused herself from hearing these um, comments and this presentation tonight. I'm a little bit confused about how she could negotiate for us, but I also recuse. It, it was very, very recently that Silverman got into a legal commitment with her firm. So is she no longer going to be on the negotiating Correct. team? She is no longer part of anything. Okay. I, I think you can understand why it, it looks a little funny that she was involved in this we and now suddenly control. that it's been settled, Nevis, she's no longer sh here. Sh we cannot control who Silverman hires to do their legal work. There are conflicts all the time. I, she was asked to recuse a while ago. No, no, she's not hired. Her firm. Okay. Well, well, let me put a pause on this. <clears throat> If I didn't explain it correctly. The last uh, mediation session was on August 9th. A few days prior to that, uh, Committee Woman Burstein called me to say she is the managing partner of her law firm, that she had just learned that Silverman acquired a building 
where her firm had a lease to store whatever they store, their materials, their, whatever they store, that she would be negotiating this lease. And that therefore, she could no longer continue in connection with this mediation because this conflict had arisen. She'd just been informed of it. She did the right thing. She recused herself. So she didn't take part in that mediation, and she's not going to take part in voting on the ordinance. When the matter goes to the planning board, she'll have to recuse there, and she took the appropriate action. Okay. I, I just I said this before I'll say it again I think a lot more trouble is created when you withhold as much information as you withhold from the public because we are left to our own devices then there's been a lack of information tonight in terms of how this was negotiated in terms of what the setbacks are etc cetera, etc cetera. a lack of information about how this recusal happened and it doesn't look good and it does not set uh, a lot of positivity amongst the residents who you still represent. And we do not feel, I can't speak for everybody else, I get a sense, I don't feel like you had my back on this and I don't feel like you have my back now. Constant of Charak, 25 Oak Hill Road. Um, so I would want to find out about the taxes that the town's going to collect from this um, building. And have you considered economic analysis of what's coming in and what's coming out? Services, police, uh, the school investment needs to happen. The, you know, sort of the quality, quantitative things that, you know, if we are, you know, if there is a X amount of dollars coming in, what is coming out as, as a result of the 62 units? I agree with all the uh, prior um, folks that spoke. Uh, another thing I would want to sort of highlight is that my kids go to Glenwood. They're going to be in Glenwood for the next 10 years. I have six, three children under six. It's already ridiculously crowded. The car line takes 40 minutes, right? So are all these kids going to Glenwood, or is there a plan to for the developer to help us with the school budget, maybe help us build part of the school or somehow expand it? Um, secondly, um, have you thought about um, I guess, could we have the law firm? Because there was, a, I think, a lawyer who represented the town at one of the meetings maybe a year ago that sort of talked about the risk of the trial, right? I would love for that discussion to happen again so we can understand that why trial is so bad, right? Because as highlighted by some folks here, folk, uh, people who, uh, towns went to trial went to, you know, 25% of the size of the, of the building that's here. Um, and I think you'd be setting a, a bad pre precedent, right? You'll be voted out in a few years, I'm, I'm, I would imagine, at some point. Um, and you are setting a precedent for potential builders having a target on our back, right? Somebody's going to come in and be like, wow, Short Hills, New Jersey, number one school district in this state or two or three, whatever, has just allowed a 48 to 50 units for a building, right? I mean, people are going to just start flocking and buying pieces of property here and trying to use that as a precedent. That's just, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but that's more of a question. So I think it would be great to have a lawyer represent the town, talk to us about the, about the negotiation, about the precedent and the questions that we have. Um, and then, you know, I think you also have not considered the value of our houses, right? So a lot of the houses in the neighborhood may lose value due to this, right? Because of traffic, overcrowding, et cetera. Something obviously we all care about. Um, and yeah, I feel that this has been very sort of cloak and dagger and we have not really gotten a lot of information that we deserve and I would highly encourage you to vote either no or uh, wait a few weeks or a month so we can have more information. Thank you. Yeah, hi, my name's John Fox. I live at 102 Oakview Terrace. <clears throat> so I'm at the end of the street, which will be looking over the development. Um, I agree with most of what's been said tonight, uh, but one thing hasn't been touched on and I'm Puzzled and perplexed, um, <clears throat> the dimension of the development for the 62 units uh, was what was questioned in the beginning. And it seems to me that at the heart of this is the, the needs of the developer to make money off a property that they bought. And I just um, I ask, was a thorough financial analysis done 
in the course of the negotiations to determine what exactly was needed for them to, to get an, a, um, an adequate reward for the investment that they were making. It seems to me that with 10,000 square feet for the Summit Medical Group, and um, yes, the affordable housing 12 units are not going to make them any money. I understand that. They are making money off the commercial space. If they're not, they're idiots. So they're making money off of that. I, they're losing money from the affordable units. But how many additional market rate units are necessary to build that up to a revenue which is sufficient? I don't believe that it's 50 units. 50 units sounds like a huge amount given that they have 10,000 square feet of commercial space. I just don't understand, and that should have been part of the presentation. If that was somehow necessary, that should have been stated to the community about why that was necessary. We've heard nothing, and that's why I think everybody is saying, why did it have to be this big? Why? Thank you. Thank you. Janet Pizar, 186 Main Street in Milburn. Um, we've been hearing about the Silverman development for, I think, two years, maybe a little bit more. And I'm surprised now that while people are discussing the, the um, monstrosity or the monumentality of the Silverman project, we're not also speaking about the other project on Milburn Avenue and Essex Street which is also going to be monumental, and whereby we need to evaluate each project individually, we also have to evaluate the total of these two projects as they come together, because we know the traffic coming out of Chatham Road is in part going to spill out on Milburn Avenue, and of course that's where the, another very large development is cited to be. And you were very, very concerned with the traffic tie-up and the backups and everything else. This is going to create such massive traffic delays. And uh, I, I'm, I'm amazed by the fact that nothing has been taken into consideration, that there are these two major projects simultaneously being considered and probably under construction simultaneously probably a mile apart from each other, and what the dual impact is going to have. Thank you. Hi, my name is Nancy Mayer, 84 Woodland Road. I certainly agree with most of what everyone has said regarding the size and density of the proposal. Um, I think what also concerns me, and I haven't, I've heard it touched upon, just want to say quickly, um, again, the traffic coming on Chatham Road <laughs> is already an issue. We know that there's been a death. If you go past Chatham Road and the train station at rush hour, it's like the wild, wild west. Okay? The, I assume it's the police have put up um, some sort of plastic barriers. They get run over. People fly through that area. Every night, it is risking your life to go through there. So I think adding more um, cars and people is definitely, I think, not just a, a visual issue, but it really is a matter of life and death. So I ask you to consider that. Thank you. Does anybody else want to comment on anything Moving forward. Oh, okay. <laughs> Jeff Arrington, 89 Oakview Terrace. Um, I don't want to take much time. I would just add to the uh, chorus of my neighbors. Um, but picking up on a sign the last speaker said, I think is important to realize. You've heard a lot of the same addresses tonight. You've heard Oakview Terrace. You've heard Woodland. You've heard Chatham Road. Less people think that this is purely a local interest of a small group of the community. It's not. This area is smack next to the train station. I can tell you as someone who walks every day from my home to that train station, the volume of traffic is unbelievable. Everybody who lives in Short Hills and commutes out of the 
Short Hills train station will be affected. Um, the, it is absolutely taking your life into your own hands, walking to and from that train station at rush hour. We can absolutely expect to have more traffic problems, not less. It's bad enough for a grown commuter, but the number of school children we have every morning that I pass walking to Glenwood are also going to be affected. So lest anyone think this is just a few disgruntled people in a small area of the town, it's not. It's going to have implications throughout the uh, township. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, Tom Herbertson, 76 Oakview Terrace. Um, I just, you know, to talk about the um, negotiations that have gone to, to get the settlement, I just want to know, uh, and I know you're not going to answer, but I, I want to know what, um, what Silverman has given up in the negotiations, because they went 60 units in the beginning, and now like, a year later they're still getting their 60 units. And I thought negotiation, you know, they started at A, we started at B, and you work your way in the middle, which I think would make everybody happy. If, if we got to the middle of it, I just don't know what they gave up or why we gave so much up because apparently the case law is in our favor. The zoning ordinance is in our favor. We don't have to give a variance to it. And, you know, we had a lot of cards to play and it just seems like uh, Silverman somehow didn't give anything up. So thank you. Yes, Jean Pasternak, uh, 342 Hobart Avenue. I want to echo what everyone here said. I think it's really important that you all listen very carefully. You're about to change the nature of this whole town. It's not just the Glenwood section. If you do this to Glenwood, you're going to have a, a, a massive disappointment across the board in all aspects of Melbourne Short Hills. And I think the other important thing I'd like to emphasize, I know some of you have young children or had young kids, you know, think about your kids having to navigate that kind of section of town with that kind of monstrous building, going to the Glenwood School that is like a picture postcard of a suburban, beautiful elementary school that draws so many people here and has drawn them. I've lived here for 22 years. My new neighbors that have been there two years said the same thing that I've said. It's just way too big. It's ridiculous. And we do expect you to have our back. And, and safety is a big deal. And all of you, I know you sat on the board, Sam, of Board of Education. Children have to be put front and center here. And I really hope that you will. Thank you. Thank you. OK. My name is Maud Hender, 14 Woodland Road. If you turn around and look at the picture on the board there, it looks really lovely, but this is not what the board wants to happen. I agree with everybody that has spoken today. I, I found it when we came here over 30 years ago. The reason we moved here was it was quiet, it was nice, we had the arboretum, and today with the Go Green, it is perfect. You want to make this into a polluted area with a lot of garbage and a lot of traffic, and I don't approve of that. So thank you for listening. Thank you for coming out. Uh, what is the rent going to be? My name is Steve Shear. I'm 101 Oak U Terrace. i just like to say I, I know the Township Committee is used to dealing with controversial issues. Where, where people are very passionate about stuff, and you have very passionate people come in and talk about one side, talk and then address the other. And I just wonder tonight where are the very passionate people that really support the position of, of the a settlement agreement. We we haven't heard a very uh, a lot of uh, comments of people that were just very passionate and concerned and worked up because they were they were so pleased with the agreement that was. Uh, uh, was negotiated, and that, that's a, uh, sort of unusual, I think, in terms of very uh, controversial decisions. This doesn't seem to be controversial at all. Uh, hi, I'm Chi uh, Yiku. I just moved here, this community, this year. I come here for quiet needs. I'm not for the looking for the commercial area where we're busy, like what I'm working in the New York City. So I'm totally against the idea to have the complex or uh, apartments in this area. It's especially as a central, like a cross of uh, 
uh, towards the, uh, the train station. Every morning I walk there and uh, later I come back through that, across that street uh, to, towards my home. I don't like idea. Every morning I have a swap of uh, uh, cars out of that complex, just like some airplanes from the uh, a carrier, the fighter carrier, that is not a good idea. I, I have to like uh, avoid the traffic every morning, uh, just uh, like a method of dealing with uh, the booth or the oxys. It's totally against uh, the nature of the, this quiet uh, neighborhood. And uh, I like the stable like a relationship among the people. And my kids have uh, trust each other and play very well with uh, the kids around my house. But uh, I, if uh, we built a very, very rental build, a big rental complex building, and the people come and left, uh, we are losing the, st the stable relationship among people. So it is not the central of New Jersey, not part of New Jersey, but the skirt of New York City. If you are looking for building a complex like that, go to Hudson River and do that, that uh, on that area, not here. Thank you. Sandy Kimmel, Seven Briarwood Drive. I, I know there are limitations of what the board can say because of litigation and because of negotiations, but I think that in light of the decision or, or the impending decision that appears to be going on here with this settlement, you owe the township the um, an explanation of why you seem to be conceding with Silverman in such a strong way. Either the board's making a recommendation that is very purely development oriented, but it doesn't seem like you've taken the best interest of the public in mind. And I think you need to explain yourselves in some way that doesn't get you in trouble with the lawyers and the case settlement. But I strongly urge you to explain why it appears there's no concession whatsoever. I will find out from the attorneys what I'm able to say at the next meeting. I think you're going to lose a big following and you have to be careful, and I think you need I to do that. I have to be careful what I can say at this point. Understood, too. Not settled. It's, I, it's I know you're not going to say it here, but I think in the Thank time you. between now and then, you should do that. Thank you. Eileen Schofield, 76 Oakview. <coughs> um, I just wanted to encourage you not to have this building built. It is going to ruin the neighborhood forever. It's going to ruin Short Hills, Milburn area forever. And I agree with everything that everyone has already said. I'm not going to reiterate everything. And I hope that you've been listening. And um, it's very important. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Steve Toger, 15 Ferncliff Terrace. So I actually wasn't planning on speaking tonight. But as I sat here, a few things occurred to me. The first is you can sum it up in a few key words, right? When you first look at this proposal, the first thing you say to yourself is, well, this is preposterous, right? This is ridiculous. You can't possibly be serious about putting this kind of building in this location. And then things start to shift because you realize that you are actually considering this. And so kind of fear sets in, right? Because now you're like, oh my god, they may actually do this. And so the other key words that come to your mind are fear, right? Because this is, can be really, really, really dangerous. So the last key word, though, that has to come to mind, uh, we're going to look to you for, is courage, right? Some board members here have to have the courage to stand up and say, this is ridiculous. We can't allow this to happen. Thank you. Um, I just want to thank everyone who came to speak so passionately tonight about the town that we moved to and that we love so much. And you guys should actually be really happy that everybody came here to fight for their town. And they do want, we all want to feel like you're fighting for us. Even if you feel like you have a gun to your head with lawsuits and that if you don't settle, something worse might happen, you still need to explain to us what happened and 
So anyway, um, because we all do love this place very much. Um, the Milburn Ed Foundation loves the Milburn kids and the Milburn schools and is passionately trying to raise money every year for all of the things that we need and don't have to keep our school district as competitive as it is. So we are appealing to everyone here on the board and everyone in the community to please come to Taylor Park on Saturday, September 28th. We are gonna be there all day and all night. We have new things um, like a basketball tournament for kids and a tennis tournament. We have a fitness zone all day. We have bands for 12 hours. We have food for 12 hours. We have music for 12 hours. There's really no more beautiful place in Milburn um, than Taylor Park. And if we all care about keeping Milburn beautiful, then we owe it to the community to come out and really support this event. So in case you don't know where or when it is, um, it's Saturday, September 28th um, in Taylor Park. And we really hope to see the entire community there and, you know, I feel very strongly for my love for this town and, you know, hope to be able to stay here for a long time and really appreciate the beauty and the special, special, special place that this is. So please keep that in mind when you make all your decisions. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to just uh, ask, not related to the subject at hand, uh, ordinance number 2543-19 on first reading, amendment to the zoning regs. I'd like to urge uh, the support of the mayor and all the committee people to uh, move that to a second reading and a, and, uh, a public comment. Thank you. Thank you. Kirsten Zweig, 78 Wellington Avenue. Uh, I'm surprised I've been sitting here the whole evening. Nobody had mentioned the Arboretum. It was given to the town for years. I taught up there. What is the, in, I mean, the situation with the Arboretum? You are totally blocking the whole. No, uh, the Arboretum has chosen not to spoke, speak I know, about but this. doesn't that tell you something? You should contact the Arboretum Board and see. Yeah, but that is really scary that nobody is talking about the Arboretum. All these years I, I lived here. I mean, 30 years, 40 years, it is unbelievable that they were so in the center of the city that everybody was protecting the Arboretum and the classes there up in, and nobody has mentioned Please it. Please reach out to the Arboretum, that's all I can say. But it has to do with the board, too. It is the environment. I mean, it, it, it's mm -hmm. just very shocking that nobody's mentioning it. Thank you. Sally Wang, 90 Oakville Terrace. Um, I have been here for seven years, and my kids, two kids, all grew up from this neighborhood we love here. And uh, from today, I, you can see there are so many neighbors here. Some live here more than 30 years. Some just move in in one month. So we all come here for our kids, for our home. We come here to let our voice, to let you listen, because we love our home. We want to, our home to be protected. We stand here for protecting ourselves. So uh, today is the first day of school year. I just want to let you know what happened today. When I drive to the woodland, I always do zigzag, zigzag. I don't want to do that because there are so many cars on the street. Uh, some ambulance, uh, school bus, uh, truck, constructing uh, truck, and uh, so many cars. I cannot imagine if there are more apartment people moving, what will happen? It's a huge building. So many people will move in. Glenwood cannot have so many space for so many kids. And uh, it's inc <laughs> I, I, I think it's uh, really ridiculous. So we live here for our safety, for this beautiful nature, and uh, we don't want to live in a bizarre world and a very dangerous world. Thank you. Okay, so we will be closing.
closing out public comment now. Oh, I'm sorry. Please come up. Hi, uh, my name is Gennaro Ramo. I own uh, two commercial properties downtown. I'm here to encourage the Township Committee about the first reading that you uh, plan to uh, uh, introduce an ordinance. Uh, I've been here in town for 40 years. I've owned property in downtown for 40, 30 years. I, all I can tell you is this is something we've been waiting a long, long time. We're very disappointed it wasn't passed last month, but um, we, we, we would like to see the first reading and also we'll be here for the second reading. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else who wishes to speak before public comment is closed out? Okay. The committee will now consider consent agenda resolutions. Get that Cheryl back. Excuse me? Get Cheryl back. Yeah. Oh, yes. Can somebody get committee woman Burstyn, please? Jim's getting We're going to move on with the regular portion of the business meeting. Welcome back. Thank you for the five minutes I'll be here. The committee will now consider consent agenda resolutions. The resolutions listed on the consent agenda for considerations are as follows. The bills list authorized refund of tax overpayments, approval of items of revenue appropriation, there's a New Jersey DEP grant for an architectural survey of the Short Hills Park Historic District, please. Request permission from the County of Essex for installation of a flashing speed sign on Milburn Avenue to authorize a hold harmless agreement. A lot of people have been asking to put a flashing speed sign in front of the high school in both directions. This is a very improvement that we have listened to people's request. Award the contract for the turf field. Authorize renewal of membership in the Mars County Municipal Joint Insurance Fund. Authorize advertisement of bids for paving of various township roads. Approve gasoline and tank license. And approval of a sidewalk cafe license. Are there any comments from the committee or the public in regards to any items listed on the consent agenda only? Yes. Yes. Good. Somebody explain what an architectural survey is of the Short Hills Park Historic District. I think I'll let the administrator take that one. I did read it, but yeah. he'll probably go. I read it, it also. And better than I. Yeah, it's 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 my um, understanding that that is a is meant to um, define the the limits of the historic district um, and and. Uh, and reevaluate those homes within it. I don't. I don't have uh, quite honestly a deep understanding of of that grant. Obviously, the Historic Preservation Commission's consultant Barton Ross uh, would be heavily involved in that um, in that project. So, is there a possibility by this that there are going to be additional homes that are going to be considered historic homes at the as a result of this? Um, perhaps, but 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 doubtful. I think it's more along the lines of, of, of making sure that those homes that are currently designated within the historic district are properly designated and, and, and co you know, codified in that district. Um, making sure that we have on our records the, the, the correct home. So it, there, you know, it may be um, a, uh, a survey of sorts that will make ensure that those homes we currently see as designated are, are designated homes. Okay. So. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee on the consent agenda items? Any comments from the public or questions about the consent agenda items? I move 19-194 through 19-202. I se oh, second that? Second. Okay. Roll call, please. Ms. Burstein? Yes. Ms. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Prupis? Yes. Mayor Paul Edlund? Yes. Thank you. Ms. Burstein, <laughs> we'll call you right back. That's good fun. I would like to present an ordinance entitled Ordinance Number 2542-19.
an ordinance to approve a settlement agreement resolving a certain litigation captioned 85 Woodland Road, LLC, et al., the <coughs> Township of Milburn, et al., docket number SXL 2672-18, and to adopt a zoning ordinance implementing said settlement agreement. The purpose of this ordinance is to approve the terms and conditions of a settlement agreement resolving certain litigation brought against the Township of Milburn and the Planning Board of the Township of Milburn in the Superior Court of New Jersey Law Division, Essex County, captioned 85 Woodland Road, LLC, et al., v. Township of Milburn, et al., docket number SXL 2672-18. The ordinance also adopts the zoning ordinance implementing the essential terms and conditions of the settlement agreement. The settlement agreement will not become effective until approved by the court at a fairness hearing that will be scheduled in the future by the court and will be subject of a published public notice that will set forth the date time and place of the fairness hearing and advise of an opportunity to be heard. The fairness hearing is in addition to, and not in lieu of, the statutory public hearing to be held on this ordinance as set forth in the requisite public notice. I move that this ordinance be taken up and passed on first reading and the township clerk be authorized to have the ordinance published in accordance with law in the item and for hearing and final passage on Tuesday, September 17, 2019. Second. Roll call, please. Mr. Green is not present. Mr. Levy? Yes. Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Prukas? Yes. Mayor Phil Egwa? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Can we please get Ms. Burstein back? She's back. Hi, welcome back. Thank you. I believe you are next to sponsor an ordinance. I would like to present an ordinance entitled Ordinance Number 2543-19, Ordinance Amending and Supplementing the Township of Milburn Development Regulations and Zoning Ordinance. The purpose of this ordinance is to amend use definitions, site plan exemption, height and parking requirements of the zoning codes of the township's business districts. These changes follow similar recommendations made in the 2018 master plan revision performed by the Milburn Township Planning Board. I move that this ordinance be taken up and passed on first reading and that the township clerk be authorized to have the ordinance published in accordance with law in the item and for a hearing and final passage on Wednesday, October 2nd, 2019. I second that motion. Roll call. Ms. Burstein? Yes. Mr. Levy? Abstain. Ms. Lieberberg? Yes. Ms. Prufus? Yes. Mayor Egla? Yes. Does any committee member have an item of old business to address? Does any committee member have an item of new business to address? Hearing none, none, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. May I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. So um, I'm glad I got to participate by moving to adjourn. <laughs> yeah.